I'm going to let you in on a secret. Best way to get that cloud job is to impress hiring managers in interviews. The easiest way to impress them is by knowing how to confidently answer their interview questions. Today, I'm going to show you the top five cloud interview questions that candidates face and how to answer them. These are questions that I have personally faced in my six plus years of working in the cloud industry and knowing how to answer them confidently will put you in the top 10% of candidates. If you've been getting calls from recruiters and getting interviews, but haven't quite been able to turn them into job offers, then this episode is for you. All these questions we're going to talk about today are very important, so make sure you watch till the end so you can be as prepared as possible for your next interview. If you're ready to get started, then smash that like button and click subscribe and let's get into it. The opening question to any interview is usually something like, so tell us a bit about yourself. A lot of people make the mistake of thinking the interviewer is looking to hear all about their life story, their family drama, hobbies, pets, whatever, but that's not the case. This question is designed to give you the opportunity to give an overview of your cloud history, as well as your cloud skills and experiences at a high level. When I'm answering this question, I usually break it down into two questions in my mind. The first question is, how did you get into the cloud industry? And the second question is, what do you enjoy about the cloud industry? So that's how I usually break it down. So if I was a beginner looking to answer this question, here's how I would respond. A couple of years ago, I started learning the Linux command line and I found I really enjoyed learning the commands. And so to challenge myself, I started creating web servers because that seemed like the natural progression. After some time successfully deploying some servers, I discovered this thing called AWS where I could deploy servers remotely. After working with AWS for a bit, I found it really simple to use and really intuitive so I decided to develop my skills in it more and learn more so I passed the cloud practitioner certification then I passed my solutions architect associate certification and I've been really enjoying the journey and I've been developing my skills by learning Terraform, CI, CD, Python, and a lot others. I really enjoy working in the cloud and I look forward to using my skills to contribute to your organization. That's how I would answer it. Notice, I'm not just giving a boring overview of what I've done, but I'm showing my passion for the cloud by using words like, I enjoyed learning this, or you know, I look forward to learning that. Because remember, it's not just what you say, it's how you say it as well. So make sure you're smiling and have an open and positive positive body language. You can also see that I answered in three to four sentences and managed to get the important points across, like how I got into the industry in the first place, like how I started learning about the cloud by first learning Linux, the fact that I enjoy learning more by doing my certifications, and my willingness to learn new things. I was able to communicate all those in just a few short sentences. Are you interested in getting your first cloud job? If you answered yes, then I have a free guide just for you. This free guide walks you through a proven step-by-step -step process to help you get that first cloud job. It walks you through the three simple steps you can take today to make yourself highly employable. The link is in the description below, so make sure you download it now if you're interested. All right, let's get back to the show. Another important question asked in interviews goes something like this. Why did you want to work for us? This can also be asked in other ways, such as why did you apply to this position or why should we pick you over the other candidates? A lot of candidates answer this wrong by being very generic. So they respond with something like, I'm really passionate about the cloud industry and I want to improve my skills and that's why I apply to your company. This is the wrong way to answer this, unfortunately. The right way to answer this is to break it down into two sub questions again. And those questions are, why do you want to work for this company in particular? And why did you apply for that specific role in that company? So you can see we're getting specific. To answer this question successfully, you need to have done some research. You need to have gone on the company's website and found out a bit more about them, where their mission, what's their company goals, have they won any awards? The aim is to find one or two interesting things about them and bring that up in your answer. You also want to have read through the job spec or the job description and picked out a couple of the key things they're looking for and again, reflect those in your response. For example, if you're interested in working at a company like Tesla and the job spec requires CICD experience and Python experience, you can answer like this. I applied for this position because I know that Tesla 
Tesla's mission is to accelerate the adoption of sustainable energy through electric vehicles. This is something I'm also passionate about because I believe that electric vehicles are the future. Once I saw the job description, I knew this role was right for me because I have a lot of experience using Python to automate tasks as well as creating CICD pipelines to improve deployment workflows. That's how I would answer this. By answering it this way, you've not only aligned yourself to the company's mission and values, but you've also shown that your skills are relevant to the role. This will make you appear much stronger than all the other candidates who've given generic answers. It shows that you've, you have an interest in the company, you've done your research, you know exactly what you're getting into, and because you're interested in them, they're more likely to be interested in you. If you're enjoying these tips so far, hit that like button and click subscribe. It really helps the channel. Another important question that's usually asked in interviews is this. Tell us about your greatest strength. In the cloud industry, I'd argue that there are two strengths that are valued above all others. These two strengths are even more important if you're a beginner looking to get your first cloud job. And those two strengths are a willingness to learn new things and your ability to troubleshoot. The cloud industry is constantly changing. And if you have a willingness to learn, you're displaying to employers that you're willing to improve yourself to keep ahead of the changing needs and technologies, which is a very valuable trait. Employers dislike candidates who are not growing so make sure you convey that you're willing to improve yourself, you're willing to continue learning, and they'll really appreciate this. Also, troubleshooting is a huge part of working in the cloud. And so if you're not willing to spend hours, you know, looking through a problem and trying to figure it out, then the cloud industry is probably not for you. But again, make sure you're communicating that you enjoy troubleshooting, make sure that you communicate that, you know, you're not afraid to, to, to figure things out. It also helps if you can back up these points with examples. So here's how I'd answer that question. I'd say one of my biggest strengths is my willingness to learn new things. I love learning new things. You can see through my history, you know, I started with Linux, then I learned Python, AWS, I've done two certifications. All of this is driven by my willingness to learn new things and my love for learning new things. Another strength of mine is that I enjoy troubleshooting. I enjoy doing the research and trying to figure out what's gone wrong and I gain a huge amount of satisfaction for finally figuring out what the issue was. That's how I would answer the question and I hope you found that to be useful. The next question I'm going to talk about is very important. It's a tricky one and it catches a lot of people out especially beginners. And this question is, what's your greatest weakness? This is a question that's designed to trip you up and get you to reveal negative things about yourself. It's a question that has caused a lot of people to be rejected for cloud roles. And I'm here to teach you exactly how to answer this question. You ready? But before that, let me give you an example of what not to do. As part of the Cloud Career Mentor Program, one of the things you can get is a personalized mock interview with a solutions architect like myself. So I sit down with you and we pretend we're in an interview. I ask you questions and then, you know, I give you feedback and I show you how to answer them better. So I was doing this with one of my students and his answer to the question, what's your greatest weakness was, oh, I find it really difficult to make new friends and interact with people. Now, my response was, this might be true, but it's the wrong way to answer this. It's the wrong way to answer this because working in the cloud industry is a collaborative exercise. DevOps, almost by definition, is the interaction between developer and operations. And so working in the cloud, you need to be able to interact with multiple stakeholders, developers, project managers, front end, back end, all sorts. And so your ability to interact with other people is actually very important. And so this would, by answering that way, that would have automatically disqualified him for the role. Now, let me give you the framework I used to answer this question, then I'll give you an example of how I would respond. So I usually answer this in three parts. The first part is usually a humble brag. So for example, you know, my greatest weakness is I work too hard or I'm too much of a perfectionist or something like that. The second part of this framework is how that negatively impacts you. So for example, I take on too much work and so this leads to burnout on my part. And then the third part of the framework is what you're doing to sort of rectify that issue. How do you fix, fix that weakness? So let me give you an example to bring it all together. So my answer could look something like this. My greatest weakness is that I work too hard and I take on too much work 
which leads to a lot of burnout and it, it, it causes me to feel demotivated. But what I've learned recently is that I've really learned how to prioritize my workload and I find that by prioritizing my workload, I can focus on the most important tasks first. And this helps me to have a better work-life balance. So you can see, I've said what the problem is, how it impacts me and what I've done to rectify this. And I found this to be the best way to answering that question of what's your greatest weakness? I'm curious to see how you guys would answer this question. So drop your answers to what's your greatest weakness in the comment sections below. I'm so looking forward to seeing what you come up with. The final common interview questions we're going to talk about today goes like this. Talk us through some of the projects on your resume, or they could ask you a specific question about, you know, one of the projects you have on your resume. One mistake I see a lot of people make is that they use the words we rather than using the word I. So they say something like we created a pipeline or we designed this solution that did X, Y, Z. This is a problem because the hiring manager can't distinguish where your actual contributions were when you say we did you do it did someone else in your team do it we had a multitude of sins and a lot of the times when candidates use the words we employers become suspicious because they feel like you might be trying to take credit for work other people on your team did. But don't worry, we all do this. I know I did it at the start of my cloud journey. I'd always use the word we because it felt more collaborative because it felt more like I was talking about the team. So if you're doing this, don't beat yourself up. We, we, we've all done it. But I just want to let you know that you might be sabotaging your chance of getting that job when you're using the word we. So practice saying I instead. I recently conducted a mock interview with one of my students in my program and I asked him the same questions, you know, tell me a bit about some cloud projects you've done. And he immediately started saying things like, oh, we're tasked with creating an IoT system. So we designed this complex solutions where, you know, the data went from the IoT device to AWS and we architected it to go to CloudWatch. And as he was talking, I began to suspect that he didn't actually have the expertise he was claiming to because he was, I, I could see from his experience that he couldn't have been the one creating the solutions architecture because he just didn't have those skills. So I pressed him, okay, what exactly did you do? as part of this solution. And after pressing him a couple of times, I realized that he actually just did the monitoring and alerting for that system, which is fine. I think that's perfectly fine. And if he had said, as part of this project, I was responsible for enabling monitoring for an IoT service, great, we could have worked with that. But I felt because he kept saying we and started describing all these things, it made it come across like he was trying to take credit for work he didn't do. And so don't make this mistake talk about specifically what you've done. You might bring some context into it, but again, make sure you use the words I and be specific about what exactly you did in the projects. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh, I don't really have any projects to talk about. The best way to have projects to talk about is to actually do projects, get your hands dirty, do some high quality cloud projects. And if you're interested in what projects you can do, you can watch this video I've created, which will appear somewhere on your screen on nine high quality cloud projects you can use to improve your skills. Or you can just sign up to cloudcareermentor.com where we walk you through all these projects in details and how to do them. Link is in the description below. So these are just a few of the questions you could get asked in interviews, but by knowing how to answer them really well, you put yourself in a stronger position to all the other candidates answering these questions who haven't taken the time to learn how to answer them properly. Before we go, there's something I didn't tell you. So in this episode, we've talked about the common interview questions. However, there are some secret roles you need to bear in mind even before you go into the interview. And by knowing what these secret rules are, it will put you in an even better position to be able to answer these questions effectively. Now, I want you to click on this video appearing on your screen and I'll walk you through what these secret rules are and how you can use them to your advantage to win at your next cloud interview.